And if you ask GPT-3 or 3.5 about me, it'll give you a bunch of details, and some of them are wrong, and some of them are right. GPT-4, everything's right. Like, it, it just nails all of those things. So it appears to hallucinate a lot less, which is crucially important. Um, but they won't tell us what's different. Like, GPT-4, they released it, with ba and they basically said, unlike our previous models, where we told you how big the model was and how it was trained and stuff, Due to the safety and competitive landscape, we're not revealing those details of GPT-4. That, to me, feels a little bit sus. They're like, oh, it wouldn't be <laughs> safe for us to tell you how it works. Right, but, also but competitive. The competitive. Yeah, it's, the competitive landscape is, is wild right now. Like, they have actual competition. For, like, a year right. ago, OpenAI were the only game in town. Today, you've got Claude from Anthropic, which is effectively as capable as ChatGPT. You've got uh, Google Bard just launched. That's another model as well. You've got increasing competition from these open source models. So GPT-3 is no longer definitively the leader in the pack. GPT-4 is. Like GPT-4 is significantly ahead of any of the of the other models that I've I've experimented with. And they're keeping it a secret. They they won't tell us what they did there. And yeah, that's um the the flip side to this though is that I think this thing where you give language models extra tools might mean that it doesn't matter so much. Like, I think GPT-3 or even um, like Llama running on my own laptop, plus tools that mean it can look things up on Wikipedia and run searches against Bing and run a calculator and so forth, might right. be more compelling than GPT-4 just on its own. Like, GPT-4 is more I capable, follow. but give, give tools to the lesser models and they could still solve all sorts of interesting problems.